Welcome back to the fort. Miss Flowers here, and I am ready to continue with Dragon Masters Saving the Sun Dragon, and we are about to start with Chapter 4. Are you ready? Great. Here we go. Chapter 4, The Wizard's Potion. The Dragon Masters dropped off their dragons and headed to the training room. The section where Griffith taught lessons was kind of like a cave. So let's stop right here just for a second. I want to ask you, where are we now in this story? What happened last time? You're right. Our characters, which are who? That's right. Bo. Anna. That's right. Who else? Rory. Right. And the main character is right. Drake. They and their dragons, and what are their dragons' names? Yes, Worm is Drake's dragon, right? Bo's dragon is, right? Shoe, right? Rory's dragon is, yes, Vulcan. And Anna's dragon's name is, that's right, it's Capri. And Capri is a sun dragon, and sun dragons can become very ill if they are exposed to dark magic and they're afraid that that's what's happened because as they were flying Capri became very ill last week so the Dragon Masters and their wizard teacher Griffith are uh, setting up getting ready to try to find a cure so let's go from there most days everyone wanted to be outside in the Valley of Clouds Drake loved it there because it reminded him of working in his family's onion fields. But today, nobody was complaining about staying inside. Everyone wanted to help Kepri. When they walked into the classroom, they saw a giant pile of books on the table. Everyone take a book, Griffith said, pointing to a stack of books. A dark wizard made that orb, so we must find a cure for sun dragons who have been touched by dark magic. Quickly now, he was already flipping through all about sun dragons. Drake took Dragons 101 back to his desk. The room was so quiet, except for the sound of turning pages. Drake read and read, but he couldn't find anything. No one could find anything. Then Rory held up dragon lore. I found something, she cried. Listen to this. Each sun dragon is born with a moon dragon twin. These twins can cure each other of almost anything. Is this true? Does Kepri have a moon dragon twin? Griffith frowned. I do not know. And if she does have a twin, that twin is likely very far away from here. There's no way we could possibly find the moon dragon in time. Anna stood up. Well, my book has a potion in it called Wicked Away, she said. It heals creatures harmed by dark magic. She brought the book to Griffith, and his eyes lit up. This might do it. It's not just for sun dragons, so I'm not sure if it will work. But it's worth a try, he said. Drake and Bo go to my workshop, bring back a jar of moonbeams and a sack of sunflower seeds. Hurry! The boys raced into the hall to Griffith's workshop. The workshop was filled with bottles and jars. The bottles and jars were stuffed with strange plants and filled with potions. Drake walked to the left side of the room and Bo took the right side. Drake picked up a jar with purple liquid inside. Lily do, he read out loud. He checked a few more jars and then saw something glowing on top of the shelf. Standing on his toes, he grabbed it. A pale blue light shimmered from inside the jar, and Drake read the lab label. Moonbeams, I've got them, he shouted. And I've got the seeds, Bo said. Let's go. Then they got back to the classroom. Rory was stirring black liquid in a black metal pot. Anna was reading direct 
descriptions allowed from her book. Griffith clapped his hands when he saw the two boys. That was fast. Now let's make this healing potion, said Griffith. Drake, empty the jar into the pot. Bo, add three seeds, please. Drake carefully opened the jar lid. The moon beam slid out like water. Then Bo dropped in three black seeds. Keep stirring, Rory, Griffith said. Rory stirred. The liquid turned blue and started to shine. A soft light came from the pot, and Griffith scooped up some of the liquid with a ladle and put it in a clean jar. Will this potion make Kepri feel better? Bo asked. There's only one way to find out, said Griffith. They all walked to Kepri's cave. Her eyes were closed, and her yellow scales had lost their shine. Griffith handed the jar to Anna. You are her dragon master. She will listen to you. She must drink this, he said. Anna nodded, and she walked up to Kepri. I have something for you, she said softly. Kepri opened her eyes. She smiled when she saw Anna. We made it for you, to make you well again, Anna said, holding up the jar. Kepri opened her mouth, and Anna slowly poured the potion inside. This has got to work, she whispered. Chapter 5 Anna's Story the dragon masters crowded around Kepri. Feel better? Anna asked her dragon. But Kepri just closed her eyes again. Bo looked at Griffith. Will the potion work right away? I do not know, Griffith said. We must wait and see. You all should head to dinner while I stay with Kepri. I'm not leaving her, Anna said firmly. Griffith put a gentle hand on her shoulder. Anna, you must take care of yourself, he said. You must stay strong for Kepri. I will send for you if anything changes. The dragon masters left the cave, leaving a worried wizard and a sick dragon behind them. Up in the dining room, they all picked at their dinner. Anna only ate a few bites of food. Drake ate some carrots and chicken but only about half as much as usual. Bo stared at his plate. Even Rory was quiet for a change. The door at the end of the room banged open and one of the king's soldiers walked in. Do you have news about Kepri? Anna asked. The soldier walked over to Drake without saying a word and handed him a rolled up piece of paper. Drake opened it. It's a letter from my mom. Dear Drake, it is good here in the fields. The onions are big. I know you are busy helping the king with this special project, but I miss you. Work hard. Love your mother. Drake felt big tears sting his eyes. He knew he was doing important work for the king, but he still really missed his mom. I wish I could tell my family about the dragons, Drake said. They have to be kept secret, Rory warned. I wish my father would write to me more often, Anna said. I'd like to hear about his adventures. What kind of adventures, Bo asked. My father sells beautiful fabric, she said. He travels all over far away from lands selling them. And we lived near the pyramids, so I often went there with him. What's a pyramid, Rory asked. It holds a king's body after he dies. It's sort of shaped like this. She made a, a shape like this. Anna made a triangle shape with her hand. The pyramids are bigger than anything you've ever seen. Your dad's adventures sound amazing, said Drake. They are, Anna sighed, but they're also very dangerous. There are many robbers on the roads, and the robbers steal from people who have goods to sell like our fabrics. And they often steal gold and other treasures from the pyramids. That is why my father did not argue when King Roland's men came for me. He knew I would be safer elsewhere. Anna looked sad. 
and Bo was very quiet. I guess everyone else is just as homesick as I am, Drake thought. After dinner, Drake and Bo went to the room that they shared. Drake climbed into bed and fell asleep right away. He dreamed of rivers and big tombs shaped like triangles. Then the desert sky turned green, bright green, and Drake woke up. The green dragonstone around his neck was glowing very brightly. Worm needs me, Drake thought. Then he heard Worm's voice inside his mind. Come, come now. Wow, this is really turning into a mystery. So tune in tomorrow. Let's see what happens, okay? Till then.